Good morning to everyone. My name is Jean Morris. I welcome you to our session this morning, which is on corrective action plans, a very, very important topic that FDA is looking at these days as corrective actions are a high focus, and that very often can make the difference between the type of actions that FDA takes following a inspection. One of the things we're going to talk today is about is corrective actions addressing deficiencies at non-compliant research sites. As I had said, extremely important. Corrective action plans very often need to include not only the identification of the deficiency, but also the interventions chosen to address the issue. Very often that is what we have today, but there needs to be more. There needs to be that next step to prevent the issues from recurring. So what we are going to talk about today is what can we do to do more than issue that list of issues following an inspection, following an audit. What can we do to make things better the next time around? And that's where we talk about effective corrective action planning, which includes other components that are going to lead to promoting improved performance for future activities. We want to improve performance for future activities so that ultimately we are going to improve human research subject protection, we are going to improve data integrity, or we are going to make sure those two key elements remain intact. Lack of having that corrective action plan, which includes review of future activities, can lead to repeats of the same types of noncompliance. Repeated noncompliance in some cases can lead to regulatory action, including rejecting corrective action plans. FDA is looking for that preventative action piece. They're looking for that piece that talks about what needs to happen next. If that piece is missing from a response, FDA may reject that corrective action plan. 